I have read two books in the last couple of years that I would totally recommend. And they are The Divided Mind by Dr. Sarno and then The Great Pain Deception by Stephen Ozenich. Steve, sorry, I probably got your name wrong there. But anyway, I'll have my son put it in the description here. My son edits these videos for me. So anyway, but the point of those books is that um, Dr. Sarno was a back specialist. He did back surgery, and he came to believe that a lot, I don't know, he didn't put a figure on it, I don't think, but like 80% or something of the people who would come to him with a back problem really didn't have a back problem. They really had an emotional or psychological problem. And if he could work with them through that, and he developed a whole program and educational system to do that, that a lot of them would not need back surgery in the end. Excuse me. So, so what he said was that the thigh bone is the biggest bone in your body. If you break it, it can heal in six weeks. So if you've got anything going on, you've got back problems, you've got you know digestive problems, you've got headaches, whatever, and it's been going on for more than six weeks, you don't have a physical problem anymore, or at least a large component of your problem um, is connected to something psychological, or there's something else going on. It's not just a physical problem. So I had surgery when I was probably 16 years old, on both of my legs, I had what's called an anterior compartment release. That meant that I had severe shin splints because I was an athlete. I played tennis and I ran. And um, and if they release the, the fascia around those muscles right along your shins, the theory is, and it works for some people, but the theory is that um, that muscle will be allowed to grow beyond what it could within the fascia, and therefore it will alleviate the pain. So I had the surgery... Um, it was a disaster. Like, I had scar tissue along my entire shins, you know, a little bit on the outside, but mostly on the inside. Um, and went from being a really dedicated athlete, like I thought I was going to be an Olympic someday. I mean, not that I was actually ever going to get that good, but that's what I thought in my young teenage mind. Um, so I was very dedicated. And um, to not being able to do those things. And I mean, we're talking for like 35 years. I, I couldn't do those things. If I went out and played tennis, that scar tissue would hurt for days. Sometimes if I took a walk, if I took a walk for a mile or two in a neighborhood with hills, it would hurt for days. And it was so frustrating because I just love to be active. Like I, I just love tennis and hiking and just it's so, it's so fun. It's so fun to be strong. And... Um, so I read that book and I thought, okay, all right, 35 years, that's like way beyond six weeks. So if this guy's right, then I've got an emotional problem here. I've got a psychological problem and I got to find a way to deal with it. So what he says is that underlying the problem is rage. There is rage. There's rage against people, against what you believe about life, against religion, against God, whatever. There's, there's a rage that you are holding on to and that is causing the chronic pain, and your unconscious mind doesn't want you to recognize what that is because it's so terrified. Like, it's more terrified of those feelings than it is of the pain. So you're choosing, at an unconscious level, you're choosing the pain. So I thought, okay, well, what could I be enraged about with this surgery? Well, there was a lot. I mean, I could be enraged at the surgeon who probably never done that and should have sent me to a specialist, like probably should not have done the surgery on a young girl and like, you know, destroyed her athletic career and, you know, uh, made her a couch potato for 35 years, you know. Um, so the surgeon, my coach, it was my track coach that recommended the surgery for me. Um, should not have recommended it, you know, should have said, you know what, Kathleen, you might want to try a different sport because this one doesn't seem to work for you, like maybe you're not built for this, but recommended surgery. Um, you know, my parents to some degree for agreeing to it, but, you know, I was pretty headstrong and very convincing, and if I wanted to do something, you know, obviously they could have stood in my way, but um, I was pretty persistent, I'm sure. But ultimately, towards myself, like why didn't I say this is not worth it, screw the Olympics, you know, this is not my sport, I'll become a swimmer, I'll do something else, you know, like, I'm not going to have surgery to continue in, in this, um, in this mode. So, so what I did was, it must have gone, it went on for weeks for sure, it could have been a few months, and I just let loose, like I had a journal, 
and I wrote, you know, everything I felt about this, all my rage from 35 years of not being active and not being able to do things and how frustrating that was and trying not to gain weight when I couldn't be active, you know, and that's really hard. I mean, I've been through five pregnancy, you gain a lot of weight and to try to lose that weight without being able to be active is tough. So, so I wrote it all out and I would write it. I didn't know that I knew that many swear words. I mean, this was like hardcore rage. And so I wrote it all in my journal and then I would burn it and I would write more and I would burn it. And if I was traveling in the car, you know, I would just talk out loud. I would be basically yelling at the coach and the, you know, the surgeon and, and you know, myself and, you know, <laughs> condemning myself for being so ambitious that I would, yeah, I would agree to surgery. And, um, and so after, like I said, a few weeks or a few months, I went out to walk again and I could feel a little bit and I would say, no, no, this is not physical. You know, I am letting go of all the anger behind the situation and I refuse to have the situation anymore. And I could walk and it didn't hurt. And I tried, I pushed more and more and more. I started playing tennis again. I started hiking, I started running. I ran a half marathon with one of my kids. I mean, super, super slow, but I did it and I had no pain. I hiked, I walked 20 miles in a day, no pain, up and down, like I'm in Bozeman, so it's really steep. I mean, going for a hike around here is hiking up a mountain because there's not a lot of hiking trails in the valley. So you hike up a mountain and down a mountain. So, you know, you can go on a two mile hike and it could take you 45 minutes to an hour and a half because you're hiking up a mountain and, you know, people have to stop and rest and whatever. So I started hiking harder and harder and faster and faster and I could hike four hours without stopping and straight up the mountain. I never stopped, straight up the mountain, straight back down. I started you know, hiking up as fast as I could, running down. You know, I mean, I was pushing it to the limit. Now here's the funny thing, the shins never hurt. So I had all this, I don't know if I still have the scar tissue, I might, but there's no pain. But what would happen is if I went trail running and was really running hard, I might come home and maybe the next day like my right ankle would hurt or the left hip would hurt or my knees would hurt or my ankles, like all these other things would hurt. But the thing that had caused me pain for 35 years and it prevented everything that I was now doing never hurt. It was like it was completely impervious. And you know, when you go straight up a mountain like that, those are the muscles you're using. Like, you know, you're flexing your feet and you're using those muscles in your shins. So it was funny. It was like I could do anything and it was like they were completely impervious. So all these other things would hurt and I guess I should work on those things and figure out what's behind all of those things. But they were more temporary. Um, but the shins never hurt. I mean, like, completely healed. I, I, I am so grateful because I could do anything now. I mean, I have gotten totally into exercise now. I mean, like, sort of an obsessive person, so, you know, I, like, do things all out. So, you know, I'm exercising the last two years. One to two hours a day is, is you know, the basics. And then if I have time and it's a beautiful day and it's on the weekend, I might be out exercising three, four, five hours. You know, so I'm pushing really, really hard, um, and there's no pain at all.